I'm Dr. Kristen Finn, and this is my assistant, Basilon. I really wanted to share with you some techniques for doing massage and gentle work on your pet at home, regardless of what you know about anatomy or muscle, um, and kind of regardless of your dog's age or what's going on with him. I wanted to give you some, some tips so that you would have success in making your pet feel better. So I always make sure the most important thing is that you are comfortable. You are able to take deep breaths um, and you're not sitting on an uncomfortable chair or in an awkward position because if you're not breathing, your dog isn't gonna breathe. And then if you're not breathing, you can't relax. So make sure you're comfortable, your posture is good, and then get your pet in a comfortable position. So this is a cushy mat underneath this towel. I don't know Basilone well. I've only met him one other time and it wasn't for massage or body work. So this, the reason I'm using Basilone for our example is because this is kind of more real life. You know, what some dogs, they just come in and lay down and they make you look really good and are all relaxed. But He's a little more reserved. He's not sure what's going on. So this is a good real life example. I always start at their, at their heads, just gently stroking them with a very light touch. It's about five grams of pressure. That's the weight of a nickel. You do not need to dig in. Deep tissue work is never preferred by dogs. They're never gonna make the mental leap that you're gonna do something today that hurts so that they'll feel better later. So again, be so gentle that you feel like you're not even doing anything. That means you're probably doing a lot of great work. If your dog is sitting and relaxing like he is, then you're on the right track. If they get up or want to move around or seem uncomfortable, you're putting on too much pressure. And, and that's okay. You'll just learn they are so patient with us. So I'm also starting um, behind his ears and at the base of his ears. Most dogs really love some gentle touch in this area. If they seem painful or uncomfortable in this area, um, that's important to note so that you can bring it up to your regular vet or your veterinary physical therapist or massage therapist when you next see them. But don't avoid it altogether. Just really lighten up your touch because it may be that the area is really tight and, um, and needs the attention. Good boy, Vaseline. And this is a really good thing, even if you just spend five minutes once a week to identify any lumps or bumps that he might have um, or your dog might have so that you can bring it up to the, your regular veterinarian when you see them. Good boy. So I'm just going to move along his skin, just gently mobilizing it up by his shoulders. I'm just going to pivot you slightly up by his shoulders. The skin is pretty movable. And then as you move down, go ahead and sit friend. Good boy. As you move down, the tissue is tighter. He actually, our only meeting was after a raccoon attacked him. I think it was more than a year ago and uh, bit him here on his rump. So he has a lot of fascial tension where that, that had happened. And unfortunately, he didn't get worked on. Um, he's pretty sensitive about it, but at the same time, he wants to get worked on because he keeps coming around. Come here, friend. Oh, yes. So I'm going to again start at the beginning of his body, just gently stroking. It's very important that your dog get the sense that you're doing something for him versus to him. So when they move around, I don't try to put them back the way they were. I just follow them and take their lead because the dog is always right when it comes to their body. So we're just stroking down as he gets more and more comfortable. There you go, friend. Oh yes, very good. And then you 
can start moving the skin. Okay, he says, well, I'm ready for you to go ahead and work on my rear. I've proven myself trustworthy. And so I'm just moving the skin around in little circles. And that's moving the fascia. And then the fascia is stimulating, the fascial movement is stimulating blood flow, lymphatic flow, neural firing, and um, the release of endorphins, which is very relaxing and feels, feels um, really good. Good boy. So I know this area is sensitive, so I'm going to really lighten up my touch. Now he's trying to press his rear into my hands, but I'm, I'm staying the course and being really light and breathing. That's pretty important. Good boy, Vaseline. And then we'll just sit here, working here for a little bit. And if your dog doesn't have a particular area that's sensitive to them, just keep going up the spine and down the spine. Good boy. Now, Vaseline doesn't really prefer that. He would rather um, I just be sitting here on his rear. So that's what I'm going to do because this is, he is being such a great model. I don't have any desire to do something for him other than what he prefers. So it's a really good example of just follow your dog's lead. Step away from your left brain of like what you believe it should be or what you read in a book. Here you go, friend. If you see your dog yawning, which Vaseline's not yet ready to yawn, but that's a good thing. It means you're really on the right track. And Vaseline is giving us a really good example of you just have to breathe and be patient. Like he finally laid down. I pulled him back because he was close to the edge of the table. Good boy but I can't force it. I can't make him lay down sooner than he wants to lay down. I mean, I could, but then I've proven myself untrustworthy and then I'm doing something to him. So I'm just gonna wait him out. Good boy. And as far as the facial tension and discomfort he has here, it's not something you can see when he's moving. You know, it's something that um, theoretically, I should have known after he got attacked by a raccoon, I'm going to have to see him in a month to work on the fascial tension that would certainly develop. But um, we haven't seen him, so it's just kind of by working on him that I was like, well, wow, he's sensitive here. Oh, yes, and I remember he was attacked and had puncture wounds. Uh, amazing he didn't get um, more gravely injured. And so he knows it hurts and it's tight and he's kind of wiggling around and pressing hard against me, then moving away. So he's not quite sure what is actually going to make him feel better. And so um, I'm just waiting him out and following his lead, super positive that he's laid down. And I just have to keep myself on track, making sure I'm breathing. You know, I'm speaking to you, so that's taking some of my breath. Good boy, you're awfully close to the edge of the table. So I'm just gonna gently move. Okay, well, I'm not really sure the meaning of this, but what are you doing, friend? So that this tells me he's getting a little frustrated that my body hurts. You're almost making it feel better. Hurry up. I'm glad he's not my regular boss because I think he would be a really tough boss. There you go. But he clearly has some underlying tension and discomfort that he's been hiding from the world. Or otherwise, we would have probably addressed it sooner. So you may find this with your dog. And don't get worried or scared. Just keep your um, slow, steady, um, observant, we call it blending in the massage therapy 
world just kind of like, I'm just with you, I'm going to follow you, and then, you know, seek professional help, whether it's a really good massage therapist or a veterinary body worker or chiropractor. But there is no harm that can be done by you just sticking with it, being patient, not forgetting to breathe, and, um, and working with the dog. So thank you so much. And please always feel free to email us at office at FinDVM if you have any questions at all. Thanks, Basilon.